Hi everyone, this lecture is about hyperbolic functions. First, I'm going to define hyperbolic functions. Uh, after that, I'm going to give the identities satisfied by hyperbolic functions, and we are going to proceed with their derivatives and integrals. Let's start by the definitions of the hyperbolic functions. Let's consider any function f which is defined on a symmetric interval above the origin. So when talking about f of x, we can also talk about f of minus x. For such a function f of x, we can always write it in the form of this sum. Uh, you see that in this sum, from the left side, the term f of minus x, and from the right side, the term f of minus x, they are canceling each other. And by these two terms, you are obtaining f of x. So it is true that this sum is equal to f of x. In the first part of this sum, if you replace x by minus x, you get the same expression, which means this function, f of x plus f of minus x divided to 2, is an even function. If you do the same for the second part of the sum, if you replace x by minus x, you get minus times, minus 1 times this function, which means the second part of the sum is an odd function. Therefore, that means you can always write any function f of x, which is defined on a symmetric interval above the origin, as the sum of an even function and an odd function. If you do that for the exponential function defined, which is defined on the interval minus infinity, infinity, you obtain this guy, f of x is equal to e to x, f of minus x is equal to e to minus x. Therefore, this part is called even part of the exponential function. And the second part is going to be f of x, here it is, f of minus x, here it is, with a minus sign in front of the second one. The second function you obtain is going to be called as the odd part of e to x. Based on these two functions, I'm going to define the hyperbolic uh, functions. The first one is going to be, the even part of e to x is going to be called as hyperbolic cosine of x. The odd part of e to x, the second one, is going to be defined as the hyperbolic sine of x. There they are. There's nothing but the definition of hyperbolic cosine of x. Here it is. Hyperbolic sine of x, here it is. Based on these two ones, uh, you can also define the other guys, tangent, hyperbolic tangent of x, as the ratio or the quotient of hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine. The other way around, you can define hyperbolic cotangent of x as the quotient of hyperbolic cosine of x to hyperbolic sine of x. You can also define the other two guys, hyperbolic segment of x and hyperbolic cosecant of x. I'm not rewriting them here. Uh, after defining these, you can also show that these hyperbolic functions, newly defined guys, are satisfying identities quite similar to the trigonometric functions. For example, look at the first one. It says hyperbolic cosine square minus hyperbolic sine square is equal to 1. This reminds us the basic trigonometric identity. Suppose that I'm not dealing with the uh, hyperbolic functions, but I have trigonometric functions in my hand. In this case, you remember that cosine square x plus sine square x is equal to 1. This is the most basic trigonometric identity you have, you know from your high school. In case of hyperbolic functions, this basic identity converts to this identity with the minus sign here. Look at the second one. It is kind of a half angle or half argument formula for hyperbolic sine function. It is twice hyperbolic sine, hyperbolic cosine. And again, let's assume that I'm dealing with trigonometric functions instead of hyperbolic functions. It is exactly the same in the trigonometric case. Sine twice x is equal to twice sine x cosine x. And the same identity is also valid if I have hyperbolic functions in my hand. And the identities numbered from 3 to 7 also, they are also quite similar to the trigonometric case. The half argument formula for hyperbolic cosine I can say for the third one, for example, for the sixth one, I can say, for example, in the trigonometric case, the counterpart of number six is, if you remember, equal to one plus tangent square, let's say alpha, equal to second square alpha. From this uh, comparison, you see that in case of hyperbolic functions, when you have hyperbolic second and hyperbolic tangent here, that plus sign here, 
is becoming a minus sign, just next to one. After seeing these basic identities satisfied by hyperbolic functions, let's uh, pass to their derivatives. And at the moment we are wondering what may be the derivative of hyperbolic cosine of x. This is quite a simple procedure. We are going to differentiate this function in terms of the exponentials. The derivative of e to x is e to x. The derivative of e to minus x is minus e to minus x. I see that the derivative of hyperbolic cosine x is equal to this exponentially defined function, which is nothing but hyperbolic sine of x. Therefore, quite similar to the trigonometric case, the derivative of hyperbolic cosine is equal to hyperbolic sine, not with a minus sign. For the second one, what can be the derivative of hyperbolic sine? Quite a similar calculation. Write down the definition, which is e to x minus e to minus x divided to 2. The derivative is with a plus sign coming from the power here. Therefore, the derivative of hyperbolic sine is equal to this exponential function, which is nothing but hyperbolic cosine of x. Therefore, the derivative of hyperbolic cosine is hyperbolic sine, and the derivative of hyperbolic sine is hyperbolic cosine. Once you obtain these two, you can also obtain the derivative of tangent hyperbolic x as by using this uh, quotient rule for this definition that gives you hyperbolic second square x exactly the same as the trigonometric case and again by using the quotient rule for the hyperbolic cotangent function here you get this derivative as minus hyperbolic cosecant square x they are quite similar to the trigonometric case as you see now after seeing these let us let's pass to the examples our first two examples are going to be the verification of the first two identities satisfied by the hyperbolic functions the first example is that one hyperbolic cosine square minus hyperbolic sine square is equal to one i'm going to prove this by direct evaluation. Remember that cosine hyperbolic x was defined as this even part of x and hyperbolic sine was the odd part of e to x. Therefore, cosine hyperbolic x squared minus hyperbolic sine squared is equal to the difference of squares of these two exponentials. When you evaluate simply these squares, you get e to twice x, e to minus twice x, plus 2 e to x, e to minus x, divided by 4, all of them, minus a similar expression for on the denominator, e to twice x plus e to minus twice x, um, minus this time e to x, e to minus x. You see that there is a cancellation between these terms due to the minus sign here. They cancel and give you it to minus, minus two. These are giving you one. They are giving you one. These two are canceling and these are alive. The last terms giving you four over four equal to one. This is quite a simple calculation just proven by the definitions of the hyperbolic cosine function and hyperbolic sine function. This was the basic first identity satisfied by the hyperbolic functions. Another simple one, something like half argument formula for the hyperbolic sine function. Again, I'm going to use the definition. Again, remember that hyperbolic sine is defined through these exponentials. And let's see, what can we have for this expression? By definition, e to twice x minus e to minus twice x. You see that this expression is something like differences of squares. So if I proceed this way, e to x with a square minus e to minus x, 
with a square divided by 2. When I evaluate this difference of squares, I get e to x minus e to minus x divided by 2. This is giving me something times e to x plus e to minus x. When I compare this with the expression I'm trying to prove, I have hyperbolic sine of x, here it is. So in order to arrive at this guy, I'm dividing by this final term by, this should be put in a parenthesis, I'm dividing this final guy by 2. In order to keep the equality, I'm putting another 2 here. Therefore, you have twice, that's hyperbolic sine of x, multiplied by hyperbolic cosine of x, of course. And this proves what is asked from you. An example for the integral of a hyperbolic function. Uh, for the solution of this integral, or the evaluation of this integral, I'm going to use one of the identities I introduced here at the beginning. It is hyperbolic cosine twice x minus 1 divided to 2 is equal to hyperbolic sine squared x. That was one of the identities I gave to you. Stra the rest is straightforward. Twice x minus 1 dx equal to, I'm keeping that 1 over 2. This guy can be the derivative of hyperbolic sine twice x, but not exactly, because when you differentiate it, it gives a factor of 2 in front of it. There is no factor of 2 here, so I multiply it by 1 half to cancel it. Therefore, the integral of this first term is that term here, and I'm integrating 1 to x simply plus a constant c. This is quite a simple evaluation. But what if we don't remember this identity? It is still possible to evaluate this integral this way. Hyperbolic sine squared x. As I said before, please do remember the definitions of hyperbolic sine and hyperbolic cosine functions. We may proceed this way. Hyperbolic sine is equal to defined as this function. Simply evaluate the square there. That's 1 over 4 e to twice x plus e to minus twice x minus 2 e to x e to minus x. That's a very simple operation. And you get rid of the hyperbolic sine function. You have exponentials in your hand at the moment. The rest is quite simple to integrate. 1 4 e to twice x is the derivative of 1 half e to twice x. That's the derivative of minus 1 half e to minus twice x. And since that's a 1, the derivative of minus 2 is equal to minus twice x. And don't forget your arbitrary constant c. Please yourself compare these two results and see that they are identical to each other. Well, Therefore, it is possible to evaluate this integral by remembering this identity, or if you don't remember it, if you remember the very definition of the hyperbolic sine function, it is still quite possible to evaluate the integral. Now, what about this one, hyperbolic second of x to be integrated? Again, I'm going to remember the definition of hyperbolic second. Uh, as in the trigonometric case, it is defined as 1 over hyperbolic cosine x. And that's defined as 1 over e to x plus e to minus x divided by 2 dx. Now, I don't have any uh, hyperbolic functions at the moment. I'm dealing with exponentials in my hand. If I organize it, I get e to twice x plus 1 dx. And I'm asking myself the question, what kind of a substitution may work here? See that if I write this expression, let's put the other line, e to x, let's write this in this form, plus 1 dx. That integrand tells me if I substitute u equal to x, du becomes e to x dx. This is going to work for me. Start from the denominator. You said that e to x is u, u square on the denominator. 
And upstairs, e to x together with dx is simply du, which is a very well-known integral. That's the derivative of arctangent of u plus a constant c. And if you substitute backward to x, you get arctangent, what is it? e to x plus a constant c, completing the solution. Let's pass to our final examples. The first one is a simple differentiation. We'll differentiate this product. It is equal to d dx of this hyperbolic function with a factor of 3 here times the second plus the first one times the derivative of the second one. The derivative of hyperbolic sine trice x is with a factor of 3 here, keeping the second term plus the first term times the derivative of this logarithm. Remember that if the argument of logarithm is u, the derivative is u prime over u. You put on the denominator the argument, hyperbolic tangent of x, and its derivative upstairs, which is second hyperbolic square x. This is quite a straightforward calculation. Maybe a more interesting one. What can be the derivative of inverse of the function hyperbolic tangent x? First of all, in order to solve this question, let us name our function s, a function y. And after that, let's use the inverse function property. x is equal to hyperbolic tangent of y. And now I'm going to differentiate this expression I obtained from the very first one with respect to x. The derivative of the left one, quite easy, equal to 1. The derivative of x is equal to 1. That y here, it is a function of x. Therefore, on the right-hand side, there is an implicit differentiation giving you y prime hyperbolic second square of y. That you obtain the derivative as hyperbolic second square of y. But this is not the end of the uh, operation because that y is given as a function of x, and here you are writing the derivative of y, derivative of y in terms of y again. This is not uh, quite, let's say, good. Let's express this in terms of x by using the identity, which relates the hyperbolic second function and the hyperbolic tangent function. If you remember, it was some kind of similar to the trigonometric case. 1 minus hyperbolic tangent square is equal to hyperbolic second square. Hyperbolic tangent y, there it is, exactly equal to x. I get 1 over 1 minus x square as the derivative of hyperbolic tangent inverse x. Regarding this one, I may solve another further example. Then what can be the derivative if I have another function as the argument of the hyperbolic tangent inverse. Well, let's remember what we have done. Just d dx of hyperbolic tangent inverse x equal to 1 over 1 minus x squared. This is the thing we have just proven, let's say. Instead of x, if we have an arbitrary function of x, by the chain rule I may conclude that derivative gives you u prime over 1 minus u squared by the chain rule, let's say. Therefore, if I have as the argument of the inverse of hyperbolic tangent function, the function root of x, I may proceed as follows. 1 minus u squared, u is equal to root x, root x squared. And upstairs is the derivative of root x. Which you finalize as 1 over twice root x, 1 minus x. Uh, 
Okay, that's the uh, answer to the question, what is the derivative of this function? But let me stress here regarding also the previous example, in order to evaluate the derivative of the any inverse hyperbolic function, you can uh, follow the procedure I have done uh, for the previous question, use the inverse function property, differentiate both sides with respect to x, but don't forget for the right hand side, you are going to apply a, a, an implicit differentiation. This way you can obtain the derivative of any inverse hyperbolic function. Dear students, this lecture was about hyperbolic functions. In order to solve any question regarding the hyperbolic functions, please don't forget to remember the very definitions of the hyperbolic sine function, the hyperbolic cosine function, and the basic identities satisfied by them. See you in our next videos.